Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again look at some of the games coming out on the Nintendo Switch in this upcoming week. We'll be covering games that release in the period of the 26th of September up until the 3rd of October. Plus I'll also give quick mention to a couple of games that have released without any sort of prior warning or if they were announced elsewhere they certainly weren't ever on the coming soon page on the eShop. Ok with all that said then, let's get started. Let's first look at those games that released without any sort of warning then on the eShop. The first one is called Rivals of Aoife and this is a 2D brawler in the style of something like Super Smash Bros. Starring a bunch of characters with elemental powers and it also has guest characters in the form of Ori from Ori and the Blind Forest and of course the recently released Will of the Wisps and Shovel Knight and he really does get about a bit these days doesn't he? I think I'm right in saying this game is a, a sequel or a spiritual successor at least to a demake of Super Smash Bros, a fan made demake called Super Smash Land and this particular game has very positive reviews elsewhere. And the other is Kirby Fighters 2, which I don't remember hearing was coming at all, have I just completely missed that one or was it a stealth drop? Either way it definitely wasn't on the coming soon page at any point. This is another brawler type game where you use Kirby's copy abilities to gain a number of different power ups to be able to battle your opponents. This is the sequel to a game that was on the 3DS and whilst I never played that one from what I understand it's pretty decent. The first of the upcoming games for the week then, this is Projection First Light releasing on the 29th and selling for £15.99 although there is 20% off of that price up until the 12th of October. This is an adventure game set in a mythological shadow puppet world and it says that the game will progress through the different evolutions of shadow puppetry through different times and different cultures. For example I noticed Wayan Kula in there which I believe originates from Indonesia, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure there are many other styles ones that I'm not as familiar with. It says that you find and control a source of light that will let you manipulate shadows and then solve puzzles and to be honest this looks absolutely lovely, I like any game that goes in a slightly different direction and as long as there is enough gameplay there this is one I'd most certainly be interested in. Next out, also on the 29th, we have Umahara Kawase Bazooka. Now the Umahara Kawase games are generally platformers where you play as a young woman who has a fishing rod and uses that to move across the stages. This looks to be more of an arcade game, similar I'm assuming to something like Mario Brothers where you have to clear a single screen of enemies before being able to move on. It says it's playable with up to 1-4 to four players both locally and online. There are 22 characters to choose from and 40 stages. It's selling for £26.99 which is a bit expensive if it is just an arcade game but it could be a lot of fun with a few friends. Next out for the week then, one I'm looking forward to, this is E's Origin coming out on the 30th. This is a prequel game to the E series and came out on other consoles 2-3 years ago now and has released, as far as I can see, to pretty good scores. It's an ARPG where you have 3 playable characters, each of course with their own unique skills and there are 4 different game modes, story, time attack, arena mode and a speedrun mode as well. Now of course we already have Ease 8 on the Switch, one of my favourite games on the console actually, and Ease 9 is on the way. And whilst this one looks like it's gone in a slightly different direction, certainly in terms of the art style which looks more 32 bit as opposed to the 3D models in the last couple of games, I'm definitely looking forward to it. If you have played it on other consoles, please do let us know if it's any good. Then we have Warsaw coming out on the 1st of October which is a turn based RPG set in the ruins of 1944 Warsaw. This has been out on Steam for about a year now, almost a year to the day when this releases and we'll see you having to use tactics such as flanking and ambushing as well as skills to try and get ahead in battle. It says you will participate in historical events and intertwines them with some storytelling to create a story all of its own and this has fairly middling scores elsewhere, I think it's Metacritic is in the 60s but if you are interested as I said it's out on the 1st. Heroes. Scouts. Doctors. Soldiers. To the 
Also coming out on the 1st we have Electronic Superjoy 2, which is a brutally hard platformer set in a world of electronic music. You will need to run, jump, smash and slice your way through a world of giant monsters, spinning lasers and secret doggos. It says this Switch version includes all of the content from the Gold Edition and this has very good scores elsewhere. I just watched the trailer and it looks incredibly difficult. You get your Super Meat Boy vibes from it I suppose. My skills have dulled to the point where I'm terrible at these sort of games these days. But I'm sure there are a huge amount of people out there that love this sort of thing. Aren't they classed as their own genre these days? I think they're called Splatformers or something. But judging by what I just read elsewhere, it looks like this one does it incredibly well. Then we have a game called Orange Blood which releases on the 1st and sells for £15.09. This is set in an alternate reality at the end of the 20th century and whilst the blurb doesn't do a great job of explaining what the game's all about, going by the trailer it looks to be a turn-based RPG of some description. Now everything about this game to start with looked fantastic, I loved the aesthetic, almost a cyberpunk feel to it in some respects, reminded me a little bit of Shadowrun, at least in terms of the world, not necessarily the characters. But then it's turn-based and to be honest I've got too many turn-based games to play at the minute. It does doesn't have a particularly good Metacritic score, it's down in the 50s. And I just wonder if it's one of those games that's trying too hard to be edgy and kind of loses its way a little bit. I mean, read that blurb on the eShop and you'll see what I mean. I don't even know what it's talking about. The next game, again out on the first, this is Super Mario Bros. 35. Now this isn't available to buy, you get it via the Nintendo Switch online service, and it's effectively a competitive version of Super Mario Bros. where you're playing against other people from around the world, and I think what you do in your game affects them, similar to Tetris 99 in some respects. This was unveiled as part of the Mario Direct for the 35th anniversary of this particular game, Super Mario Bros., a week or so ago now, and it's only available until March the 31st next year. So if you do have the online service, Look out for this one next week to be able to download it. Outpace your opponents. Keep going until you're the last Mario standing or running. This game will be an exclusive offer for Nintendo Switch Online members. Super Mario Brothers 35 launches. Coming out on the second, we have a game called 103, which sees you playing as a woman called Lily who has lost her memories and must use her imagination to try and unlock them. In the process, reliving the events of the night in which she lost them in the first place. It says this all takes place in a small, detailed environment where you explore, find clues, and have to solve riddles. I'll be honest, judging by the screenshots, there isn't a trailer on the eShop. It looks very much like a first person survival horror game at first, but reading that description, it doesn't seem that that's the case so much and perhaps it's more like a hidden item or escape room game set in the first person i'm not quite sure the screenshots certainly have an eerie atmosphere to them and it's only four pounds 99 and if you are interested it's out on the second and the final game for the week then, coming from the same people as the previous game and selling for the same price, this is Make a Killing. And this one most certainly looks like a first person survival horror game. You take on the role of Cole, a man that has traveled to unhallowed grounds to try and save his brother Jace. Jace has accrued debts and has been taken by a mass murderer and Cole must try to save him, which results in a deadly game of cat and mouse, so says the blurb. Again, no trailer on the eShop, which is a shame. The screenshots look to use a black and white aesthetic. It doesn't look like anything that hasn't been made over the last few 15 years already, but it is only a fiver and it may be worth picking up, we'll see. So there you have it, they are some of the games coming out on the Switch next week, unless of course anything surprise drops once again, and if it does, I will recap it at the start of next week's video. It's definitely becoming a more frequent practice. Please do let us know if any of these games interest you, stick it in the comments section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.